What is the error of Balaam? Balaam was a prophet who was hired by Balak to curse the Israelite children. God told him not to go and curse them, but he went anyway, because of the riches he was promised. His heart was deceived by the allure of riches. 1 Timothy 6 verse 10 says, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. It is so easy for someone to commit an error by chasing wealth instead of God. Chasing wealth is sin, and sin is missing the mark or committing error. Let's read why it's so easy. Jeremiah 17 verses 9 through 11 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. As the partridge sets on eggs and hatches them not, so he that gets riches by not doing right shall leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end shall be a fool. Balaam was no exception to this scripture as we will see. Balaam was killed by the same Israelites that he was hired to curse. He left all his unrighteous riches behind because he died. Due to this circumstance, Balaam looked very foolish at the end of his life. Let's examine the error of Balaam so we don't fall victim to this error. You can find the story of Balaam in Numbers chapter 22 through chapter 24. Three whole chapters were devoted to this story and it's referenced three times in the New Testament. It's a very important lesson for God's people. The beginning of the story is summed up as follows. Balak, who was king of the Moabites, saw what the Israelites did to the Amorites, and he was scared. He knew of a prophet that was known for blessing and cursing. He sent messengers to this prophet named Balaam to offer him money so he would curse the Israelites. When the messengers arrived, Balaam asked God what to do, and God told him not to go with them. He heard clearly from God on this, so he sent Balak's messengers away. Balak sent more messengers with more promises of riches back to Balaam to entice him to come and curse the Israelites. He asked God what to do again, but this time his heart was deceived and he didn't hear clearly. He committed error by believing God told him to go, so he went. God was angry with him because he went. He was not supposed to go, but the deceit of riches got into his heart. I want to stop right there with this story for now so we can concentrate on the root cause of Balaam's error. In the parable of the sower, it says, He also that received seed among the thorns is he that hears the word, and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. The heart of Balaam was full of thorns due to the deceitfulness of riches. These thorns caused Balaam to hear the word of the Lord incorrectly. He heard the Lord tell him to go in Numbers 22 verse 20. I don't believe the Lord changed his mind on this because in Numbers 22 verse 12, God told Balaam not to go. I believe Balaam's heart was deceived for unrighteous gain. 
Balaam tried so hard to serve both God and mammon, but he could not. He thought he was hearing clearly from God, but he was not due to the deceit of riches. Luke 16 verses 11 through 13 says, Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will entrust the true riches to you? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. The error of Balaam is a case of a deceived heart and it also shows why you can't serve two masters. Serving God and serving wealth can't be done. You either serve one or the other. Balaam chased wealth even when God told him not to go. Second Peter 2 verses 14 through 15 says, Having a heart exercised with covetousness, they are cursed children who have forsaken the right way and have gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. What are the wages of unrighteousness? It's the wealth of this world. Balaam served wealth, not God. His own heart was deceived due to the riches he was offered to go and speak a prophetic utterance. Balaam was a prophet for prophets. Romans 11 verse 29 says, For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. This means God never changes his mind when he gives gifts or when he calls someone. This means a prophet can go away from God and still have the gifts of prophecy. This is not what God wants for his people. Let's look at some more of the Balaam story to get an idea of what God thinks of this behavior. Starting in Numbers 22 verse 22, we see God is angry with Balaam for going to curse the Israelites for unrighteous gain. God sends an angel to kill Balaam. God allowed the donkey that Balaam was riding to see the angel. The donkey avoided the angel three separate times, and each time Balaam struck the donkey. After he struck the donkey the third time, God opened the donkey's mouth. The donkey said, What have I done to make you hit me three times? Balaam said, You've made a fool of me. If I had a sword in my hand, I'd kill you right now. The donkey said to Balaam, I'm your own donkey. You've always ridden me. Have I ever done this to you before? No, Balaam answered. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his sword drawn in his hand. Balaam bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. The angel of the Lord spoke, Why have you hit your donkey three times like this? I've come here to stop you because the trip you're taking is evil. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. If it had not turned away from me, I would certainly have killed you by now, but spared the donkey. Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I've sinned. I didn't know you were standing there in the road to stop me. If you still think this trip is evil, I'll go back. Okay, we can stop the story now. Balaam was so deceived that even after his donkey talks to him and he sees an angel of the Lord with a sword telling him his donkey just saved his life, 
He still wants to continue for the sake of gain. He was completely deceived to the point that even the obvious events around him did not sway him from continuing on the quest to obtain unrighteous wealth. What Balaam did was rebellious, which is witchcraft. Ignoring God and doing things your way is lawlessness. 1 Samuel 15 verse 23 says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. A prophet that chases prophets is someone that is starting down the slippery slope. The slippery slope starts with being unthankful for what God has given you. When you are unthankful, you end up serving wealth because you feel like you don't have enough. Romans 1 verse 21 says, Because knowing God, they did not glorify Him as God, neither were they thankful. But they became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. If you want to know where this slippery slope leads, I urge you to read Romans chapter 1, verses 21 through 32. We, as a people of God, must take this error of Balaam seriously. Prophesying for unrighteous mammon will only lead to many sorrows. We cannot allow our hearts to be consumed by the deceitfulness of riches. Proverbs 4 verse 23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Today, as you watch this video, there are those that are committing the error of Balaam. They have allowed the love of money to take over their hearts. You can read about them in Jude verses 11 through 13 and also 2 Peter 2 verses 1 through 3. In these scriptures you will find out what happens to those that give themselves over to the error of Balaam. If you have felt convicted while watching this video, now would be a great time to repent. Ask God to remove the thorns from your heart. When Jesus Christ comes back for his bride, you want to be part of the meeting in the air. You don't want to be rejected because you served unrighteous mammon. I will now end this video with scripture from Matthew. Matthew 7 verses 21 through 23 says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name, and through your name throw out demons, and through your name do many wonderful works? And then I will say to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, those working lawlessness.